80 kilometres off a of Polo Bay gone fishing charters. It is rough as a dog's guts, but I'm having the time of my life. We've been catching a few nice fish, and I thought we might share a few with you. We're going to have a little bait ball here where it is literally going off tap. We're going to throw this pill in and see if we can't find a beautiful southern bluefin tuna. So, I've just hooked what they're feeding on, and you can see it's red bait. And I hooked that next to the pilly there, I was winding in. So, of course, what I'm gonna do is match the hatch, literally, and I'm gonna drop this back into the bait ball, and hopefully this tuna eats this. Laren's plan worked beautifully. That red bait just got smashed by a very nice fish. I'll get mine out of the water, mate. So this fish ate the red bait. Took a really big run initially, and there's so many seals in the water here, it's out of control, eh? We've got the bait ball literally at the back of the boat. It's hiding under Suzuki's, and the seals are trying to come in and get it. So one of the problems you get in this scenario is that- This is a big fish. The right? seals are jumping and actually hitting our line. This fish has got some weight to it. That's when you know, oh, that's when you know the bait's close, Red. Look at this. Look at oh, this. Nicely done, mate. That's exactly what I got it on. Red bait everywhere. Look at these beautiful little creatures. Red bait, red rockets. We're going to put them in the light bait tank. This is going to be pretty unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Look at them. There's a few things I've learned about tuna over the last 10, 20 years. One, you've got to be where the bait is to catch them. If you find the bait, find the bait balls, you will find tuna. Don't go off looking for new fish. Just sit on that bait ball and keep working it until the fish come up and feed. There will be a bite time. Make sure you're there and that bite time happens. Number two, the more boat traffic, the less tuna. So today, there's less boats out than last time I fished. More tuna getting caught every boat hooking up because the boats aren't scaring the fish and putting them down. And number three, the rougher it is, the more tuna you catch. They tend to like this rough weather. They're cold water southern ocean fish, these bluefin tuna. They like it when it gets all rough and nasty. And you put those three things together, you hook up like this. He's over here, Chris. That's it, mate. So, I fish for a living, believe it or not, and I've got no idea what's going on right now. This fish, when it first took the bait, we thought it was 100 kilos. Then it's some of the boat, we thought it was about 10. Then it um, come to the top, Red, we're both confused. What do you think now? Well, my back's telling me it's bigger than 10. <laughs> Can I ask a serious question? How's the ticker going? Uh, I've got a new one, so I'm all right now. It hangs in there. The old one wouldn't be doing this. The old ticket went when you what, 17? <laughs> 16. 16. You've got a brand new heart and lungs? No, I've got, got my own lungs. Oh, thank goodness for that. I thought he'd run out of breath. He's got, just don't, don't exert yourself too hard, OK? I'm good, mate. Can we go right hand down? Fish is close gear, to the in gear, in gear, I can't reach out any further. Right hand down in gear, keep going. Keep going. So. I'm having a bit of a joke with Red because he's my mate. He got a new heart and he's 17 years of age and saved his life. 16, just told you that before. As I said, he got a new heart <laughs> and he's 17 years of age. Well, you were 17 because it took me away. It's a long story, it's windy. My niece had an asthma attack, she's 17. She passed away, we donated every organ in her body. If you are not an organ donor, you're crazy. Make sure you tick that thing on your license because you can save someone's life. Without an organ donor, this bloke wouldn't be here today catching a tuna. Do me a favor, if you like I fish, you watch the show, put the tick on your license, make a difference. I can see him, I can see the fish. We can see the fish. How far? It's about 15. 15 to 20 metres. Yeah, go right hand down for me, Chris. On these bigger game fish, 
What the skipper does at the helm is half the part of catching these fish. We are communicating hard. Chris is driving this boat. He's spinning the twin Susies like there's no tomorrow. And what we want to do, Red, can you please explain about being on the downside of the wind of the fish? Yeah, we've got a pretty stiff 20 knotter here today. So if we, if Chris had to sat on that fish on the other side where we were. The upward side? The upward the side, the wind side of it, we would have blown on top of it. So we've got, with the wind hitting us in our face, it's actually quite nice at the it moment. Is, it's quite pleasant. But, um, so we're basically running with this following sea. The boat is now drifting this way with the wind and it's drifting away from the fish. Whereas if you drift over it, you can cut your line. So it's all those little things. I've lost vision. He's on top here. He's on top here. We've got leader. Just keep tucking here. I'll do a bit of walking for a bit. Oh, here he is, Colour. There he is there. He's coming up, he's coming up, there he is. Yeah, he's got some length. Walking the dog. Walking back, it's good. He's just here, he's just there. So what I'm doing is trying to pinwheel him as we, as the tube, there's that famous little pinwheel that they do. There's a bit of fish there, mate. It's a solid fish. Using the length of the rod here is crucial because if this touches that aluminium, it's game over. Interesting fact, Apollo Bay has a beautiful nine hole golf course right in the middle of town with some beautiful water views. So even if you don't catch a big fish or if it's too windy, you're still a chance of a hole in one. Back drag off, drag's backed off. Just leading this fish up slowly. And crucial here when Paul's leading this fish up that I wind that slack in. I back the drag off a bit. Nice fish, mate. Walk the dog, Paulie. I'm trying. Oh, he's a solid fish, mate. This guy, I reckon, is the perfect eater. Brendan, grab the gaff. <laughs> and it's important with a fish like this to try and gaff it in the head if possible. Go, go, go. No, I just wait. I'll bring you back past. Bit. That's it. In the head, bottom of the gills. Just hold him there for a sec. Let him bleed. That's the ideal scenario. Hoggy. Woo. Well done. We've got a gaff in the head because that doesn't ruin any of the flesh. The other great thing, a bit of blood's coming out, it's all good red. Great effort. We'll sort our stuff, get that water off the lens and show you this magnificent southern bluefin tuna. Seriously, if I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it. Look at this, the heart out of that tuna is still beating. Look at that, he's still going, and that's why it is involuntary muscle. That's why it's so important to brain spike your fish first. Now look at that, the heart will still keep pumping. I'm actually massaging that heart and it's beating because that still pumps all the vital organs continue to work, and that's why it's important to bleed the fish after you've spiked it. Look at that. What's gonna be in here? Hopefully everything. Pillies, oh, there's pillies. a bait of ours. There are our pillies. Squid, unbelievable. Interesting fact, Apollo Bay was established as a township in 1840 by the Henty brothers and it was a whaling station at the time. Today, it has a population of 1,580 people and a huge population of southern bluefin tuna.
this is Brendan Sutcliffe. He is the deckhand on Dawn Fishing Charters. Uh, now, you threw a little sneaky line over because we said, let's have some fun. Yeah. How long did it take, mate? Oh, about all of a minute. <laughs> yeah, nice. Now, for people watching, just tell us your first southern bluefin tuna ever was how big? 115. We got very lucky. I don't know whether this will match it, but it's <laughs> it's well, doing me over pretty good. When your first southern bluefin's 115 kilos, it's all downhill from there. Obviously, you've been touched, mate. That is amazing. And it's going to get this fish in. We've caught plenty of fish today. It has been one of those incredible days ever that you'll literally talk about forever. So this fish is going to be released. You're going to look after it. If it's a big fish, we'll just cut it off in the water. The circles we find. Smaller fish get in the boat. We'll make sure this fish goes back because southern bluefin tuna are just way too important not to treat with respect. They say teamwork makes the dream work. We now have Brendan all harnessed up. And you'll see spin tackle here. 10 years ago, you wouldn't think about using spin tackle for big game fish, but Stellas and all those reels have just come so far, the rod technology as well. So you'll see we've also got a special harness so we can actually use a harness on a spin reel. If you can get yourself one of these from Shimano, absolutely brilliant, it makes life so much easier because we're taking all the pressure off the lower back and off the arms and using the biggest muscle in the body to fight this fish. A bit easier, mate? Much better. Yeah, there you Thanks, go. Fellas. <laughs> you just relax and enjoy. Anything, do you need me to scrub the boat or anything? Yeah, well, you know, mm. a brush. I was hoping he'd say no. Hello. <laughs> Get the net ready. Get the net. Rod rod, 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 rod. Rod around, bring your rod around. That's it. Yeah. Now bring the rod tip back this way. The rubber mat. Lift that door up and off. Oh, okay. Oh, got it. Oh, no. No. Don't Shut get it. it. Oh. oh. Come on. Later, head it in, head it in. I'm, I'm fighting. Hey, get away. I can't yeah. get his head down. I'm just going to slide it up. Yeah. 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 Give me a gaff. Hey, back it off. Get away. Just pop the gaff in there. Can we kill the hand? Yep. Well, mate, you were doing really well for about 99.5% of that fight. Yeah, then I had to put the cube on. <laughs> isn't nature an incredible thing? This fish would weigh, I reckon, 18, 20 kilos. Did you set the seal, pick it up, and literally throw it through the air? Launching, absolutely launch it effortlessly and unbelievable. That is my body. If, if in nature you stop for a second, you could possibly die. That is amazing. It is a dog eat dog world, isn't it? Massively. <laughs> well, this fish was going to go back. That was the plan, but plans change quickly when you're on the ocean. So, Icky Jimmy on ice. We're going to eat well tonight. And you seals, get your own fish. <laughs>